Hi everyone, it's me, Genshin Impact. Let's fight against, well, um, gods. All right, let's start. Thanks to Genshin Impact for sponsoring today's episode. Thanks, Genshin Impact. Wow, Thank it's you. been almost a year since I last did a theory on Genshin Impact. Should wow. really try hey. another one of those. Any ideas, last Paimon? Year. More riddles? Paimon's dizzy already. Oh no, Paimon used up all her brain juice. Welcome brain to my life, Paimon. <laughs> brain Welcome cells. to my life. Your brain cells. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Hello! <laughs> Let's start! The show that sees there's a 50-50 chance that you'll hit that subscribe button. Yes or no? So subscribe! Thank you so much. I like those odds. As I've already mentioned, today's episode is sponsored by Genshin Impact, Thank who you, did man. an episode with us a year ago as well, so uh, glad we didn't scare them away. They just released their new 2.5 update on February 16th, adding even more content for you to enjoy and explore in this ever-expanding world. They're Mm, it's very sense, this update. There's new enemies, new quests. They're even bringing back some old characters like the Raiden Shogun to stand alongside their newest five-star character, Yai Miko. Which is funny, because oh. both of them actually play an important part in today's theory. Don't you love it when an integration works out seamlessly? Now, all these mm -hmm. new features are great and all, but we all know I'm really here. Lore! Genshin Impact Lore Book! <laughs> For those of you who don't know, when you boot up the game for the first time, your character, the Traveler, gets sealed into a deep slumber where you then experience nightmares for 500 years. It's something like freeing jutsu, um, stealing jutsu lah, um, sealed for 500 years. Have a reference to Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, um, being Wu Zhisan, the Five Finger Mountain, under it for 500 years. Similar. Talk about hitting a progression wall right off the bat. When you finally do wake up, you find yourself in Tavat, a land that's been divided up into seven regions, each with an archon, a local elemental god presiding over it. Now, yes, a god. The last time we covered Genshin, we spoke mainly about the Geo Archon Zhongli and how his decision to fake his own death might have actually doomed the people of Tavat. Economically wise. So when Genshin asked me to do another episode, I figured why not take a closer look at yet another Archon. But this time, let's one up the stakes. I actually wanted to focus on an Archon that we haven't met yet. One that's been heavily teased, and one that is integral to the ongoing plot of the game. The mysterious Zaritsa, Cryo Archon of Snizhnaya. The fact that I was able to pronounce that correctly should show that we not only do our research, but we also <laughs> really enjoy this game. But Case in point, I really respect that MatPat did all this research, man. It just incredible. The fact about Zaritza, by the way, it's not actually her real name, it's a title. A title that comes from the feminine form of the word Zar, hence why her mm. followers sometimes call her Duh. the Zaritza. The Bravo, comrade! I doubt even that Zaritza herself ever expected I would make it this far. Also, if the Zar title and the word comrade didn't clue you in, the Shneznaya region is actually inspired by Russia, which also explains why it's associated with the cryo element. There's a reason the Ushanka were invented in Russia. Ushanka are the hats with the fur ear flaps. Yeah, we're, we're learning all sorts of wacky words today. <laughs> Yeah. This is a recording nightmare, man. And no, but think about it, it's quite educational, right? And quite entertaining, so... Educational plus entertaining equals to entertainment for the win! <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, despite never having met Saritza herself, she does appear to be the closest thing that Genshin Impact has to an overarching villain. Her followers, the Fatui, go from region to region beating up or tricking local gods in an effort to steal the source of their powers. But I've got a theory. A game! Y you know the deal at this point. That yes, I know. A game theory! <laughs> Saritza isn't actually the villain that she appears to be. I'm determined to predict this game's big twist before it happens. That Zaritza, for how nasty her methods may be, will actually be revealed to be doing all this in order to save humanity. She has good intentions. Oh Thank yeah, you. my friends, this is classic game theory. The villain isn't the villain at all. And I'm about to prove it. Oh, and also the brand would like me to remind you that although this video is sponsored, all the conclusions I've come to are mine and mine alone, based on dialogue and story elements within the game. I've got no external help whatsoever, and who knows, I might have just prompted them to change their entire storyline. Okay, so let's look at the events of the game to understand what she's done and what might really be going on here. In pretty much every story arc thus far, Zaritza's followers, the Fatui, are constantly up to shady stuff. In the prologue, we see one of Zaritza's lieutenants beat up the Archon of Mondstadt in order to steal his magical god item, his Gnosis, which connects the user to Celestia, Land of the Gods, in the process amplifying their elemental powers. Like, power up! Something like an up! Great! 
Each of the seven Archons has one Gnosis, which means that Zaritza already has one of her own, but now she's sending out her goons to go and collect the others. Given that these are meant to be sources of divine cosmic power, Zaritza immediately starts giving off some serious Thanos vibes, and her quest for the Infinity Stones doesn't stop in the prologue. Oh my god! I am inevitable, if inevitable, combrat. Sorry. In the very next arc, we have oh our gosh. second major encounter with the Fatui, with another of Zaritza's <gasps> lieutenants trying to steal the Gnosis off the corpse of yet another Archon. So you've been planning to take the Gnosis from inside the Exuvia all along? It's my duty to see the will of the Zaritza fulfilled. She will get that which she desires. Now, those of you who watched my last theory will remember that this Archon was never actually dead. He just faked his death so he could kick it back in his human form, Zhongli. So then... He's like, oh, I'm dead. JK. <laughs> we win, right? They can't steal his Gnosis because Zhongli's alive. Except then this happens. I see that as an absolute win. You remember the agreement, Morax, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. The contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. Zhongli just hands his Gnosis over to the Fatui because of a contract. Paimon Why? does a good job of summing up my feelings here. No, wait. That's an exciting twist and all, but... <laughs> Why? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract, for it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. Okay, so boy, he seemed quite silly and foolish, right? Giving such an important stuff to the antagonist, the bad guy, supposedly. The villain. Fine, keep your Why? secrets. I'm gonna be over here freaking out because Zaritza now has three Gnosises. Gnosises. Gnosis I? Gnosai? I like Gnosai. Anyway, that now means that she possesses earth, wind, and f ice. <laughs> it's like, earth, wind, <laughs> It's like Avatar, the four elements. Ice powers, I'm not sorry, earth, sorry, wind, and fire. Though, sorry, I do I'm wish sorry. that you would join a disco band at some point. Anyway, in the next arc, we travel to Inazuma, where word on the street is that the local Archon, the Raiden Shogun, has been oppressing her people. At first, it seems like it's gonna be a story all about the region's internal politics, but nope, turns out the Fatui were behind this one as well, sowing Ooh. discord and seizing control over the region for themselves. Of course, we confront Zaritza's lieutenant, she denies it, we fight her, she loses, she dies. So, yay? Not quite. Did you say Gnosis? As in, the little thing that looks something like a chess piece. Mm, chess I handed piece. that over. You had Why? one job, Yai. These Archons just need better staff. Once again, you had one job, man. We're one step Girl. behind, and just like that, Saritza and the Fatui are in control of four of the seven Gnosis. Geo, G Cryo, Animo, and Electro. Give her a bit more time, and she's going to be able to summon Captain Planet by herself. <laughs> so Saritza is making some pretty great progress, bedazzling her infinity gauntlet of god gems. Already, that paints her as a bit of a villain. But why is she doing this? What is her true goal here? Does it's like Thanos like that. Fine, I'll do it myself. Then she just want a bunch of power? Well, in the story trailer, we actually learned her reasoning for collecting all the Gnosis. Her followers hope only to be on her side when the day of her rebellion against the Divine comes at last. Rebelling wow. against the Divine? Well, uh, yeah, tearing down the heavens is usually not something that the good guys want. She is clearly the big bad of the game, right? 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 Well, think right? back to how she obtained two of the Gnosis. Both Zhongli and Yai Miko gave them up willingly. It was a negotiation not a battle or trickery. For both these Archon to just give up their godly power, it feels like there's gotta be good reason there. Sure, uh -huh. Zhongli might be a bit of an airhead when it comes to managing money, but he has a long history of forging contracts that ensure the long-term well-being for the people in his region. Case and boy, he has lived a long, long life. And when I say that he has a long history, long. I do mean he has a long history. He's been protecting Liyue for over 3,700 years. And during these 3,700 years, your economical skills a bit... Mm, room for improvements. I don't think Zhongli would be giving up his Gnosis so willingly if he was sure he was giving it over to the bad guys. Despite his lack of understanding when it comes to economic issues, he at the very least has his people's best interests at heart. So then, what about the Archon that Team Zaritza beat up? Why would Zaritza take that first Gnosis in such a violent fashion? Well, according to the story for the item Stainless Bloom, which is supposedly telling us the story of Signora, we get this quote. We share the same goal. You, your Zaritza, and I. Cleanse the sources of distortion in this world. Short-sighted, ignorant gods. Zaritza 
Maritza believes that her path is righteous and for the betterment of all people. Venti, the protector of that first Gnosis, was exactly that. A short-sighted and ignorant god who had basically abandoned his people, leaving them to fend for themselves. It's actually similar to Zhang Li's story too. A god who got tired of being a god and gave up the Gnosis in order to walk around as a mortal vessel. In the game, Venti's abandonment is framed as a good thing. The people of Mondstadt are proud of their self-reliance and his songs and fun-loving nature make him beloved by the people. He's the fun boss who everyone likes, but he doesn't actually do his job. When Zaritza's lieutenant shows up, she calls him out on this, addressing him as the Absentee Archon of Mondstadt. An absentee Archon. Someone who's abused and neglected their role. So maybe that's why Zaritza and the team stole the Gnosis by force. She didn't see Venti as worthy of bargaining with. As True. When the things of during peaceful times, it's, I'm grateful that there is such a wonderful boss. But when the going gets tough, when we need someone to take up the leadership of a leader, of someone that is responsible for everyone, being there is very important, right? As they say later, That Tsaritsa's dream is the noblest and purest thing in all the world. These other mundane details you insist on mentioning, they're just necessary sacrifices. But necessary to what? Overthrow Celestia? Take down the heavens? It doesn't sound like a very noble cause to me, but then you get lines like this. She no longer needs the power of the Gnosis, and in any case, she tells me she has severed ties with Celestia. Sure. Case in point, even though they are gods, they are still under Celestia, right? The Gnosis is a source of power, but the Raiden Shogun still wields immense power despite giving up the Gnosis long ago. So mm -hmm. maybe this quest has less to do with a quest for power and more to do with a quest against Celestia. As Paimon says, There would keep them connected to Celestia. A connection back to Celestia, which, as we just heard, the Raiden Shogun has no need or desire for. Now, why would that be? Well, it's important to understand what exactly Celestia what? is. As I've already mentioned, it's kind of like heaven. It's located above the clouds. It's a place where those who've ascended to divine godhood can hang out, and we're told it's basically the physical creation of heavenly principles, or, or the divine. That sounds like it should be a realm associated with mm. the good guys, but we've already had a run-in at the start of the game with the sustainer of heavenly principles, and uh, let's just say that she wasn't acting all that good to us. Who are you, the sustainer of heavenly principles? The arrogation of mankind ends now. This is who's sustaining the heavenly principles that's responsible for the creation of Celestia. Remember that whole thing that I mentioned that happens at the start of the game? The whole sealed way into 500 years of slumber filled with nightmares thing? Yeah, this is who does it to us. Someone who seems to value judgment above and beyond anything else. Listen, I'm not gonna deny that mankind can be guilty of a little arrogation every now and then, but the way yeah. that she's saying it, it sounds like her answer to ending mankind's arrogation might just involve ending mankind in the first place. Also, <gasps> what does arrogation mean? Is it being arrogant? Arrogance? Google to search. claim or seize without justification. Okay, so not really being arrogant. Also not to be confused with irrigation, which is watering <laughs> land by artificial means. Yes. So mankind has seized things- Farming for the win! without justification and Celestia ain't too happy about it and might just be angry enough to start taking some extreme actions. Yeah. Looking deeper into the lore, we learn that there was once a war called the Cataclysm of the Cairnria. The Cataclysm in Cairnria. Cairnria. Sorry. Yep. Where the gods and Celestia destroyed an entire nation because they went against the heavenly principles. I would go back and look up the pronunciation of Cairnria, but um, that entire nation was destroyed, so... Yeah, 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 yes. Definitely, definitely. That's the reason. Mm. What are they gonna do about it? And Anyway, the way the whole Cataclysm thing was handled by Celestia seemed to have left the Archons with a bitter taste in their mouths. There's a line in one of Zhongli's story arcs where he has this to say about the Heavenly Principles and how his values may have been eroded over the millennia. People abandon and surrender the things they love to pursue the right path. Perhaps this is the erosion imposed on me by the natural order of this world. In the original Chinese, he says, Tianli? It's translated here as the natural order of this world. Tianli. It's more like sky philosophy or sky reasoning or heavenly reasoning 
you can think of it as, like godly destiny something like that and that's a valid translation but it's the same yeah, word that's principles? translated elsewhere as godly heavenly principles? principles other valid translations destiny? being the divine or destiny in see, other words see. while celestia may well be the world of the divine it's less a realm of all that's good and loving and holy and more a realm of inevitable destiny zhong li knows this he's experienced the erosion of his personality and of his friends personalities over time so case and points, it is just inevitable that the gods are not good. The gods becomes bad gods. And in this cutscene, he outright says that he believes that this erosion is imposed on him by the heavenly principles. All of this would imply that when you use a gnosis, the connection goes both ways. Sure, the gnosis made Zhang Li more powerful and able to produce Mora, but it's also changed who he is as a person. It True, that's very interesting. Oh, Mova, do you know that uh, Zhong Li is Zhong Li? Uh, okay, there's in Chinese, right? There's like Zhong 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 Zhong. There's um, four different types. The, so it's the, the first one, the first one, yeah. And then Li, it's Li 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 Li, the second one. So it's Zhong Li, in which is translated to I kid you not, I kid you not. <laughs> clock separates or clock away, uh, clock left. If that's what he believes, then it starts to make a lot more sense why someone like Zhang Li would want to sever their connection with the realm of heavenly principles. Oh wait, you can see a time left or watch red left. Correct. It could be why he's giving up his gnosis to Zaritza willingly, and also the reason why the Raiden Shogun would have severed her connection to Celestia as well. They want to break from destiny. They want to live their own lives, and Celestia isn't happy about giving up control. So when we're told that the Zaritza is gearing up for a rebellion against the Divine, that is what she's planning on fighting against. She's battling the same forces that sealed the player character away in a nightmare cube for 500 years. She's battling the same forces that eroded Zhang Li, the same forces that the Raiden Shogun intentionally cut herself off from long ago, and the same forces that wiped an entire nation from the map. Even Venti, who didn't go out of his way to give up his gnosis, seems pretty undisturbed by losing it. He reacts by going to hang out under a tree. The wind amongst the branches is good. I love the way it smells. You just got robbed of your godlike powers, and that's the first thing you have to say? I, know <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the true. What are you doing, man? Well, Venti's whole thing is being carefree, but he really doesn't seem like someone who sees losing his gnosis as a huge problem. You'd think he'd yeah. be doing more to try and get it back, you know? Clearly, the Archons of Tavat do not care for the Divine. In fact, they seem somewhat opposed to it. Giving you must recognize that 3,700 years is a long, long, long time. Literally, multi millennia. <sighs> Saritza, their gnosis is essentially a win-win for them. By giving it up, they sever their connection with Celestia, something which erodes their personality in exchange for power, which it turns out they don't even need. Plus, if Zaritza is successful in taking down the divine, these heavenly principles, then the Archon don't have to be worried about them coming down and ending humanity, the people that they've sworn to protect and have actually grown quite fond of. Why else would Zhang Li fake his own death just so he can hang out with mortals? We know that out of the seven major regions, Zaritza's is gonna be the last one that we visit in the main storyline, so it would make a ton of sense if the climax of the story was some epic team-up event, where Zaritza, with all seven gnosis in hand, finally leads her rebellion against the Divine, with all the other regions of Tavat supporting her, allowing the residents to finally live in peace without the fear of Divine intervention. At first glance, it might seem like this is a story all about a supervillain trying to acquire seven artifacts Something like just to become the most powerful, but I think that Zaritza might end up proving to be Genshin Impact's biggest and most important hero. The protagonist! But hey, thanks again to Genshin Impact Thank for you. sponsoring this video. This is the second time that we've jumped headfirst into the lore of the franchise, and it has not disappointed. Plus, with the new 2.5 update release, they've added not one, but three new events. So there's even more lore now available at your fingertips. You bet I'm gonna be playing that after I'm done recording the episode. I'm excited to see how I can fit the electrifying Yai Miko into my roster. I've been told that her playstyle is shockingly good. <laughs> so get it, get it, shocking with battery? Triple Oh, if what we've theorized about today is interesting to you, or, you know, you just want a triple-A quality game for the low, low <laughs> price of zero dollars, then head on down to the description below and click the link to download the game on the device of your choice to start your adventure. And if
I like it that a triple A reference. If you use the code, oh, this is a big code. I, I'm gonna read out, but I'm also gonna put it down in the description so you can just copy and paste it because I like sorry. that they didn't make this a real word. Oh, sorry, this is delightful to me. ZSPDKSC3V8V5 rolls sorry. off the tongue. You can get your hands on 60 of the game's premium currency, Prima Gems. Clearly, they don't want to be giving away too much more after our last theory. You'll also get five times the amount of adventurers' experience using the code. So here it is again. It's a mouth full but don't worry i'm putting it down in the description so you can just copy and paste but for all control c control v all of you who have a instant memory for this sort of stuff zspdksc3v8v5 easy as that just remember you'll need to be at least level 10 to redeem the code so get to saving that world people then it's just see and just don't, don't forget about it. I'll see you all in the final battle against the Divine, or not, in case that's not the story that they're planning. Although, never hurts to be prepared, because you know what? It is just a theory after all. A game theory! Thanks for watching! And hey, if you haven't already, why not check out our previous theory about Zhong Li and how he's doomed the entirety of Tavat into an economic crisis. Promise it is much more entertaining than it sounds. So check that one out, or, you know, make your Gnosis power the power of subscription. It's got very Subscribe. short cooldowns. Thanks again, everyone, Thank and I'll see much. you all next week. I like it that MadPat is trying to trying to, his best to try to pronounce the word Zhongli, um, the name, even though it's not his main language. Um, he, he's trying his best, and I'm just appreciative that he's being such a good role model that um, it's like if he's trying, maybe his audience may try to pronounce the name properly. Thank you so much, my pets. You did well. Anyways, if you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel and I sincerely appreciate all of your support and encouragement for my work. Thank you so much for the best and I hope to see you all in my next video. But hey, that's just a theory, a film theory, and cut. Thank you. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye-bye. Subscribe. Thank you.